Hey everyone, a quick message before we get started with this salmon fly tying video. I want to thank everyone for their support. These salmon fly tying videos take a long time, take a really long time to edit, and they take a long time to watch, trust me, I know that. Uh, but it does seem like a lot of people want to watch the entire thing. It's amazing to me that you have the time to do this sort of stuff, but maybe it's just, maybe you just, you just really like it, which is incredible, uh, to be honest. I, I appreciate that. If, if, it makes all the effort that goes into one of these videos worth it. If you're not subscribed and you're watching this video, definitely subscribe because I'm going to be doing more videos like this without a doubt. I'm not going to be stopping the salmon fly tying videos. And I will probably do even harder ones than this, even though this is a really hard one. But we're going to be doing easy ones too. And we're going to be doing dry flies and nymphs and streamers. And we do fishing videos. I, I do a bunch of stuff, but if the salmon fly is not something I'm going to be stopping. So definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed and I hope to see you in the future. Thanks. All right, well, if you're watching this video, this fly must have came out good enough to post. We're doing a Jock Scott. Now, I've tied this fly before, but just once, and not this version. This is the Price Tanned version. It's a little bit more difficult. Um, but the one I did was the Kelson, the Kelson Salmon Fly dressing. Now, there is one part of this that... I am going to sway from the price standard version is in the tag is is um, there's no floss in the tag but there is in the Kelson one and we're going to do the floss because it, it looks good and this hook I'm using you know I don't know exactly what this hook is but it's more of a display hook you see how the point is really sharp right here but the body is thick that's so that you can just tie the gut in here, right? This is not really a fishing hook. This is a display hook. And it's actually kind of rough here, the finish, but we're going to be covering that up so it doesn't matter. That's better. I got the little piece of plastic in here to hold it. I don't think it's going anywhere. Let's put this gut on. Remember, we're only going to be tying the gut in just a little bit. And we're going to start by And put this on. Remember, it's got to be underneath. And then we'll put this loop around. Like that. Yeah. That's it. And then when we come up, we'll get this tied in a little bit better, but I don't really want to get involved with that just yet. Now, if you watched my video, uh, the salmon fly called the Lank Tot, the body is very much like the, um, the Jock Scott. Very much like it. It's a yellow, black. Black's got the hackle. It's got it's got one tinsel, um, the, the uh, Jock Scott's got two, I think. I think it's got a flat and an oval. And the, this back is, is the yellow floss, and it's got two veilings, two can. And so it's really very similar. The tail is different on the length top versus this. But as far as the breakdown is concerned, it, if you want to try and practice a body and just kind of not be committed to the entire Jock Scott as of this moment, You, your best bet is to go and tie that length top. That'll, uh, that'll, that'll, you know, it's just a, it's a, just a nice way to break into the body a little bit. Now, we tied this in, I mean, this is obviously just, just up here with 12-0 Giorgio Manici. Now I'm going to switch to yellow thread, which I normally don't do, but I am for this. First part of this fly is flat silver tinsel right back here. Now in the price tenant uh, dressing, 
it goes flat to the tinsel right into the tail. We're not going to do that because it's ridiculous. I don't even understand. I mean, it's just like, it doesn't make much sense to me. So we're going to just deviate that from a little bit and we're going to use the Kelson recipe and we're going to put a yellow floss in after the flat silver tinsel. But yeah, I mean, I think there's this one by Price Tannin and maybe one other one that has it without floss, just goes right into the tail. I don't understand it. I'm just going to go back here. It's very different, but you know what? Price Tannin was like that. He took a whole bunch of flies and made them extremely hard, and he wanted to put his own spin on things. So it kind of makes sense that um, that you know he did something wacky like that. That is, it, it sounds a little ridiculous that I'm calling it wacky, but in reality it, it is. I mean, probably less than one percent of salmon flies, you know, uh, full dress salmon flies. Uh, don't have floss there. Now I just put a little super glue on there just so that when we turn this thing on it sticks and we don't have a, a slipping issue. What do we got here? Can we go one more? Just gotta keep it tight. And then when you tie off, this is actual tinsel, when you tie off actual tinsel, you got to follow it up and over with the thread. Floss. Just this yellow Danville four strand. We're only using one strand though. And I think I'm going to tie it in the full length of the first part of the body and then we'll get this thing out of here down and then back up. All right, tail, tail. I got my tails and my toppings drying over here. Now you probably saw this in, if you watched my uh, major, 80 major video. I, I, I put the toppings and the tails on here and I spread them out and you know, I wet them and I, 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 I put them out on this thing and I get them in the right shape so that then when they dry, they're not exactly the way I want them. And that's what I did with this one. Now I don't normally do this. Sometimes I just take it right out of the bag or I take it right off the head and I put it on. But this one, we're going to try and frame this one so we're trying to make it look good. Now, if you look at this, I got a whole bunch, oh, well, I got three, but I got still got fibers pulling away, which I don't want. So I'm going to grab the tip right here, and then anything that's hanging off, it's just not long enough, it's, it gets, it gets torn off. 
So let's put this on. Let's see what happens. Just make sure it's on top. So now I'm just going to hold this and then cut this to the length. And I might even, just so we know it doesn't move, I'm going to put a couple loose turns in here and then go back. It's supposed to be Indian Crow. Basically, laying like right in here. Now this is an Indian crow. This is something called Brazilian tanger. But it's it's so it's a natural feather. It's not a it's it's not a a dyed sub. It's a natural sub. And I've never used it before, but I can tell you it's a very wispy type feather. That's my opinion on it. Now let's see if we can... Will we get this in? Now, I think I want to see a little bit of the gray. Because it lets you know it's a real fiber. What's cool about this... Uh, real feather. What's cool about this feather is, is that it's... It's... It's gray, yellow, and red. Just like an, a crow feather. It's not like a, a red bishop or a, um, a uh, whatchamacallit there, that's just orange. Weaver, that's the one I'm talking about. Which I used before, I've used Weaver, and I've used, I don't think I've used it on the channel. Weaver and Red Bishop, they're just all orange, usually. But this, this is cool because you can, you can see it change color. Uh, I like that, that that part about it. So I'm just making this this thread black. If you're gonna color thread, uh, if you use like a really big sharpie, it's gonna drop a whole ton of ink on the thread. And sometimes it'll travel, just wick right up the thread, and it could bleed into things that you don't want to turn black. And we're putting ostrich right in this area right here. You want like a mini, mini one, not a big one. It can be tough to find these mini ones. You got to really, you got to either specifically buy them small, like you can on Feathers MC. Or you have to just pick through a zillion uh, you know ostrich packages to find them. It's not uh, it's not easy. These ones I happen to have are mini and long, which is kind of rare. Usually the mini ones are tiny. they're like this long. but this one happens to be really long. I don't know where I got these, but they're very cool. And I think I can get one more turn on here. Now the key to doing this is you want the the inside. There's an inside and outside, just like a hackle. And you want the inside facing this way. Now before we go up any further we're going to get the tinsel out. The tinsel that we need now is a yellow, uh, yellow, is a silver oval, not yellow. That's not going to work for us. Will that be enough? I think it will be. Now all I did was take the end of this oval and kind of pull on it and that will What do I want to do here? Do I want to? Yes. That'll kind of sort of unravel it. Sorry, I was just trying to concentrate. 
if you pull on that end, it'll unravel it, and it'll give you a a um, just a just a thinner part to tie in. All right, the floss for this this section right here it calls for a golden yellow. So I'm going to use a different one than the tag. This just happens just to be a just a just a decent amount golder. If you can see the difference there, it's just it's just a little different. Don't be dumb and take off a tiny bit of this stuff. Take off more than you need, and it's, it can be frustrating to put this stuff on when you have such a huge piece. It is what it is. Just. look at this here though. Do I have... yeah this is good. Now when you do this you have this huge piece right here. This thing must be, I don't know, a foot and a half long. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make a turn and with your other hand you're gonna basically bring it around the other side of the vise. And you can get this out of the way too. Bring this thing up. One annoying part is if you're using a cutoff of of tinsel it means you can't put it in like your little holder if you got a little holder like I have a spring holder on this vise you tuck materials in well the material is too short it won't reach it so all we're doing is I'm turning it with my my right hand and I'm, my left hand is just bringing it over the vise but I'm really not taking my eyes off the body and it can be it can be a little bit dangerous because your left hand can hit the vise sometimes. But just take your time and make sure you throw that whole piece of floss over. Now on the way back, usually what happens is, 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 is that there's a little bit of a step when you get back to that hurl. Because you tie it in the hurl, you tie it in the the tinsel. So try and make sure that you keep the turns closer. Okay, oval tinsel. Let's bring this thing up. Try and make it nice and even. That's let's see, I don't like that. I don't like the way it's ending right there. I just wanted to move it just just a touch. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah. So what I'm using is, uh, it's supposed to be toucan. It's supposed to be toucan like this. Uh, but I'm not going to use toucan. I didn't use crow in the tail, so I'm not going to use toucan here. And what I'm using is this right here. This is like a Eurasian Oriole. And I'm going to use two on top and two on bottom. And... It's a pretty big feathers because what I want is is that I really don't want to see much gray. So this is one. I think I think I think I know I know I know how I want to put this on. I think I might do it one at a time. So this is one. And I'm really just, if I feel like I got it, I'm just going to put one turn in to hold it. And all I'm also doing is I'm just licking the feathers. Just licking the feathers so it 
little fibers stay together. All right, we got to do something about the sun. This thing's coming in. It's gonna set my face on fire over here. All right. We'll talk, we'll talk in a minute. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. So let's cover this up with our with our ostrich. <laughs> See, we got one of these large ones. We can do both of. We can do the 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 butt and this joint in the middle. We can do it with the same one, which is interesting, right? It's hard to it's hard to find ostrich like this. So that is going the wrong way. That is going the right way. Do we want one more? First thing we got to tie in is a hackle. We got to tie it in with the tip first. All right, now we got to tie in the two tinsels. Two tinsels. One is this flat right here. This is like a large flat. It's a Lagerton, and this is like a medium oval. And it's it's bigger than the one in the back. That's what you want. You want something bigger than the one in the back. So now I'm going to take the end of this and I'm just going to just open it up a little bit. All I'm doing is just just pulling it with my nail. It just helps it tie it in uh, just a hair thinner. Try and get it underneath. And just get this thing out of the way. And then the flat, I have it just cut into a little bit of a point so it's easier to turn up. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to get some black floss. This is four strand, right? We're only using one strand. Yeah, you could probably use two strands here. Two strands is actually tougher to to use than one. It, um, yeah, let's try and use two. The reason it's tougher is because they can just separate on you. And you could, it, it's hard to make it, make them cooperate with each other. But, in this particular case, it's not a bad idea. Because we got a lot to cover and a lot to smooth out. Now let's make sure that we do not hit. We don't want to hit the floss with. Um, we don't. We don't want to hit the floss with the um, with the tinsel because that'll be the end of our floss. And look at that. The first time. First one. I heard he did it. Okay. Okay. So we just gotta concentrate. Really big pieces of floss. Just concentrating so that I get them both over. If I see them separating, since I'm using two, you just got to give it a little bit of a, uh, like some sort of just a, a wiggle or something, and that'll bring them back together.
Okay. Alright. So there's a little bit of a step here, but I'm hoping it disappears. Alright, so the first thing is we're gonna bring up this 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 flat tinsel. And we want to do four turns just like we did on that side. So we're just gonna now we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back. We just want it to be a hair closer. Not much closer, but just enough so that we can get those four in and then this one. There's a step here, but it's going to disappear. I'm not really too worried about it. Right here where the gut is tied in, it's going to disappear. I'll show you I'll show you how it disappears. Once we get the hackle in, it's going to cover it up. And now we're going to just try and follow this. them to be on the body and also we need it to be on the hook eye side the, the gut eye side Now I'm going to try and get some of these, or most of them, on the bottom. That's the way I like it. Now you can see that there's a lot of room here. You can see the tip. I mean, there's, there's a ton of room here. And you might be thinking, well, it's just too much room. Well, it is too much room, but I'm not going to tie everything in right here. My goal here is by by leaving this much space is spaces is that I progressively move up with the wing because there's so many different things that need to be tied in and if I tie it in in stages I can get the head to be exactly the size that I want it which is basically over here somewhere I want the head to be. Basically kind of where where you see the hook, maybe half of that hook length. I want that head to be about that much, if you can see there. Uh, but, well, let's get started and l let me show you what I mean. First things first, let's get this turkey and put it on. Now, why is this a big gigantic slab of white tip turkey? Well, because this is an underwing. It's inside the actual wing. And you're not going to see this whole thing, but I tell you the biggest sin of this fly is, is that you put in too little of turkey and when you put the wing in there's a hole here. That is terrible. I tell you it ruins the fly. Don't do that. Just put in a ton of turkey and know for sure that you're not going to have a hole. And I'm just going to make sure of something here. This one has got a little bit of a a ruffle to it, but I think it's going to be all right. Now, distance-wise, we're really, I don't really want to go that far. Probably just like this is good enough. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to, we're going to go right here.
when you're doing something this big, it, it can be difficult. So take your time with it. That's it right there. Now, you can see that some of this hackle got caught, but that's all right. It's so thin that you just pull it right out of those threads. Brand new razor blade. We're not screwing around. Now, we got to be really careful here. In fact, maybe you've seen me do this before, but what I like to do here is I like to I took off two turns because I don't, I don't want to try to bulk it up. What I like to do is put some super glow on this thread and make sure it's 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 on there and it's dry so that when I cut this off with the blade with the razor blade if I happen to nick the thread it's not going to completely unravel on me because of the of that super glue sometimes it's also good to super glue underneath all those turns you made underneath super glue those as well so when you run this blade through you don't cut those, but man, how about, how about that? I mean, I literally barely touched that stuff. Yeah. So that's looking okay. And it's a big slab of turkey. And, and this misalignment that seems to keep happening, it's because it's getting caught. But it's not going to matter because once you get the wing over it, it's that's all going to be covered. All right, now we're going to put a little bit of hackle in, just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it here. I'm going to build this up here because we don't, one of the real problems is, is that if you tie a wing on too low, it's going to hit whatever's to the, this side of it and bump it up. If you don't want it to bump up, which I don't, you got to build this part up right here. Okay, the wing. The wing I have it constructed already because this is a big fly, and I really building the wing on camera and adding it to this 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 video. I mean, this thing. I really don't like to make videos over an hour. The last one was like an hour and five minutes or six minutes. I, I was really I was struggling to get it under an hour. So I got the wing here. It's made. I'll just talk about what's in it. And you can see I got two two sides here, obviously. I have blue, this is goose shoulder, and then I have a peacock wing, and then yellow, that's yellow turkey, red turkey, and then next to that is bustard, then it's um, golden pheasant, that's a sub actually, I'll show you, I'll show you that sub in one second, and then after that is florican. Let me get you that sub and show it to you, see right here. This is a golden pheasant sub. Golden pheasant is very easily procured. The problem is, is is that it's usually terrible for marrying. It's just horrible to get a good one. 
and this happens to be Amherst, Lady Amherst, dyed to look like golden pheasant. Now, there's a couple of different subs out there you can get. And one, maybe one day I need to do a video on, on subs and all different types of subs you can get. But that's one of them. It's expensive, very expensive, but it looks real good, especially in smaller sizes for sure. Really trying to be gentle with it. Yeah, I think that's it. Now it looks pretty straight right now, but once I tie this on, the um, it's gonna there's gonna be a good bend in it. And if you have enough length, you can also put a little bit of a bend. I think they call it a hump. So let's get this. Get this good. And I also want to make sure that I have it. Yes, okay. It's got to be covering that turkey. And it's got to be low. Okay, so let's... should be able to bring it back. Obviously, it looks ridiculous right now, but as long as... Nope, I gotta go back. You can go back if you're careful. Now, this looks a, a little screwed up, but it's it's not actually. I just gotta bring the fibers back together. And if you're working with good material, it shouldn't be that hard to get it back together. You just gotta just gotta work with it and make sure. that they're not connected. Sometimes the, the wings can connect together and that'll make it extremely hard. Now before I go any further here, I got a problem, and I don't know if you can tell, but the problem is with this turkey. It, I, I screwed up in the beginning. I knew that the turkey was just not totally right. It had a little bit of a bend in it, and it's really causing me issues right now. So this is my fault. I never should have used this part one in the first place.
Oh. Can't believe I fixed that. Yep, right in here. Now the sides. The sides are um, teal, piece of teal, and a um, you know a slip of teal. Sorry, a slip of teal and a slip of wood duck with the barring on it. And we're going to use this. Alright, I have two slips here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on. Sounds a little crazy, but I'm going to do one slip at a time. Because I want to do like some pretty decent sized pieces. Which makes it difficult to put them right next to each other. I'll show you what I mean. So let's, we're going to get this first one on. I'm just doing two turns. And you can see it right there. It's basically where I want it. I want it at the joint. And now, if I take this second one and I put it on top of this one, but on on an angle, two two turns, and kind of move it into place. Yep, that doesn't look good. Let's go back. What time? Yeah, see, that's right below it, but in reality, the two pieces are on top of each other, right? Which, which essentially makes it so that you can put bigger pieces on without without um, covering up too much area right there. Now I want it to be on the joint. Tie that in a little bit of a I don't know I have it on here. I got it. Yep, I got it below. Okay, now before we go any further, let's get the throat on, the actual throat. Now the actual throat is this right here. See this speckled guinea fowl? This is what actual guinea is, right? Everybody knows what this is, guinea, right? This is speckled guinea. So what, this comes from a speckled guinea fowl? No, this it comes from the same same thing. The um, There's just not many of these, and price down is a real pain in pain the rear end so he wants you to use the speckled ones um, and uh, they're hard to find if you see one grab it put in a bag uh, sometimes you'll see it included in like a, 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 a bag of guinea if if it's there pick up that bag take the feather especially if it's a long one because long ones are not easy to find now I want I don't want to tie it in right I want to tie it in a little bit up here wax on this thread. Now let's take a look at this. Now let's clip this.
we got we gotta we got a couple more things to do up here. Right, peacock sword. Two two pieces. Pe this is peacock sword if you don't know. Right hand side up. It's a left and a right. And you just drop it on there. It's a real pain to work with. And honestly, um, you don't really need a left and right. Oh, I think you don't need a left and right. You just need a curve. Right. And you just need to drop it on there. But the issue is, is that um, you need it to be longer than um, the bronze mallard you're going to put on. So I have to. I have. I have two here, and you can put them on at the same time. You can put them on at different times. But what's going to happen is, is that as long as it's at the top, meaning as long as you tie it in at the top. Now I'm tying it on like I do um, horns, right? Uh, as long as they're at the top, the bronze mallard can hold it up there if you do the bronze mallard correctly. This is too long, so we're going to put the crease up a little bit higher. And I tell you, this can be very frustrating, just like horns are frustrating. But just get it in there. It's not a big deal if it's not perfect, honestly. It it really isn't. It's there. It's two peacock sword feather uh, strands, not even feathers. Strands. I mean, these things are. I would say they're worse than horns. Yeah, so we're gonna go bronze mallard, and then we'll probably then we'll put the eyes in, and then we'll um, we'll probably put more throat in, more uh, galena in here, and we'll be we'll be on our way, and I think it'll get us in the right spot. So let's let's just do the bronze mallard first. You need a left and a right. Usually the way I do it is is that if I feel like I need a medium size piece, I'll take a, two large feathers. If I need a large size piece, I'll, I'll take an extra large, that sort of thing. Oh, I got two here now. We got we got it going the same way as the wings. So for instance, I'm looking at this feather and I'm pulling from this side and I'm making that my side. So I call, this is the way I call it. When I take it off, because I always take it off from the bottom up, I call the upper side the inside. So I have the two insides together, if that makes sense. You really got to get them close. Get them as close as possible. Now the length we want, we want to make sure that you can still see the peacock. The peacock's got to be sticking out still. And we got it spread, but we've got to make sure it's close. It's got to be close. It's hitting the, the gut, and that's what's making it spread apart. So I'm just going to just make sure we got it right here. I think that that's good. And now we're just going to fold it over and drop it down I would say that that's almost good. It's just, see, obviously it's popping up. 
And it's popping up because there's a step in the head. So we're just gonna we're just gonna see if we can get it to sit a little bit better. Let's see if we can cut this off without screwing it up. Oh, Jesus. I didn't realize your side was messed up so much. And I think once we get the the uh, toppings on, that's going to it's gonna lay a little bit better. I mean, I think it's okay now, but I think it's gonna lay better. I don't know, let's see if we can get these eyes on. Now I want them. In, I've said this before many times. I don't like like very big eyes. It's not just not my thing. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to lay this flat. Sorry about that. I'll at least to try and get you in focus. Not, I'm not a big eye guy. I like, I like small eyes. Just put a third turn on here. Now I'm just looking at the length. It's it's way easier to lay this thing flat. I mean, it's absolutely way easier. So if you can do that, do it. I really want this to be good, so I'm doing it, but normally I would try and make it so that that you could see me putting it on. The, um, all right, so now we're going to put some more throat in. Um, this is more, not the black, we're putting the, we're putting the speckled guinea in. Got to have some length on it. Now the actual cheek material is supposed to be chatter. I'm not using chatter. Most people use kingfisher. That's the just the standard sub that everybody uses. It's cheap, readily accessible, everything. But I'm going to use something a little bit different because I used something kind of unique back here. I used the the Brazilian tanger. I'm going to use a, a a feather from a bird called a mot mot. And this is probably the biggest it comes in. <laughs> they come in. They they. They're from the head of the mot mot, and again, we're gonna have to lay this on on the side. Now, it's a it's a very bright feather, and it's it's pretty rare, so that's why I'm using it. It's just something since it's 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 not the it's it's not the exact material. It's a sub, but it's still kind of cool if you think about it. Because when you tell somebody that, oh, you know, oh, did you use kingfisher? They're like, no, I used a mot mot. That that just just makes it just a little bit more unique. We're gonna rotate this way so we don't lose a turn. And let's see if you can see it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. This one's all right too. This one, yeah. All right, 
So that's cooking okay. We're almost there, aren't we? Got two more, mm, no, three more materials, but a whole ton of steps. I'm gonna do the toppings now. I, I haven't yet decided if I'm gonna do two or three. I have not decided. I'm thinking three. Yeah, let's get this this last one on. Just make sure that wing is going to work. Yeah, okay. All right, second to last material. We got the horns we got to put on. And uh, if you don't know what this is, uh, it's in almost every salmon fly, so you should try and pick this up. This is from the tail of a macaw. And the best thing you can get is the center tail, but a left center or a right center will work unless you're doing like a big gigantic thing, then you're going to need either the left and the right or the center. Because if you look, this is a, mm, I'm not sure if this is a left center or a right center, but you can see one side's longer than the other. The center one would be the same length, very long, but this works. I mean, if you look, this is a 5-0 and even the short side works. So, especially if it's a good feather. Now, it's only you only need one and it can be tricky to put these on because it's it's T-shaped this thing and you want the blue side out towards you and it's it's essentially like this. This is the blue and this is the yellow. Right? See it's got a yellow on the other side. And you have to put this part into the fly, very difficult. So I cut this part off and then I smash it with some tweezers to make sure it's flat. And just holding it. And if it twists on you, figure out which way it's twisting and then maybe twist it in the opposite direction or hold it in the opposite direction you got to mess with it. Get one turn on and then move it into place and then put a second one on. Yeah. My side is alright. And now we're going to do your 
other side. The key is just get the length the same. Just built that up a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. We got one turn. I mean, we got two turns, but we're still slipping, unfortunately. put another turn on but I know it's not gonna work I don't have it maybe I do have it you might have it here Let's just we'll finish off here. I don't know, let's take this thing out. Right, let's take a look here. Yeah. I think that um, there's, a, there's a couple of slight differences between your side and my side. I mean, there's so many steps. I mean, there's no way I can make them look exactly the same. And I was concentrating on my side because of the um, because framing I'm going to do from this side. But so the difference is is that it looks like on your side the small oval tinsel right here is about three and a half turns. But when I was doing it, I was trying to concentrate on mine, which is four turns. So Now, my eye is a little bit lower. My jungle cock eye is a little bit lower. And you can see some of the turkey there, just a little bit. I don't know. I assume you can, you can see it. But on your side, you can see more of the turkey, for sure. Now, I think that's just because it's caught up in there, and i got to get a needle and, 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 and drag it out from inside the wing. And also, it looks like your veilings, your two veilings, look really good on your side. But I think mine, I gotta just tweak it. You see how it, there's, there's, there's a piece running through the, the center? I gotta get that out of there. It, it, I'm not sure if I, can, if I can move it underneath or I might have to cut it out. I, I don't really know just yet. Uh, other than that, I don't see any major differences. I don't see any major differences, yeah. Yeah, the eye on your side is just a little bit higher than my side. But that is fixable. I just grab it and pull it down some. Because I like my side. The eye on my side is, is the right size. And now, what else? I don't know, it seems like it's about different. I mean, about the same other than that. Not much different. The uh the horns, I could probably pull them in a little bit, crease them. Um some people like them, like a little bit flared out like that. I don't think it looks bad. And 
I'll make a note in the description, but there's no hurl on the on the price tanned version. There's no hurl on the price tanned version, and there's no yellow floss. I think I mentioned the yellow floss in the beginning. I didn't mention the hurl. Uh, but uh, is it in the Kelson version, the hurl? I don't know, but either way. But other than that, this tail needs to be worked a little bit. And I like that the that the the topping is 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 it fills in this part. I like that. Just makes it a little bit fuller. Yeah. I really want to just grab that eye right now and just yank it. <laughs> Give it a good yank. <laughs> but I'm not gonna touch it right now. I'm really I don't want to mess with it as of this moment. No. Yeah. Alright, Jock Scott. It's a big get for the channel, I think. I mean, I really am happy about this. I kind of always wanted to tie a Jock Scott for the channel. It's, it was it was like a really important step, I think, just for me. Uh, like, personally, I think that, that um, tying this fly, which is, I would say, I would call it the most important salmon fly, um, for sure. And I would say it's the most famous. I mean, everybody kind of knows the name of Jock Scott. Everybody knows it. So it's 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 big for the channel. Really big. Um, so I'm happy. I'm happy we got it in here. And uh, I think it looks I think it looks pretty good. Now, if you notice, I mean, when I tie things, I don't screw around. I mean, I I put the camera right up against this thing, and. I really want you to see exactly what's happening. So, I mean, you see, you see everything. You see all the imperfections. You see as they happen too. Now, sometimes imperfections get hidden by the next step. So, sometimes you'll be watching something, and I mean, even the video too. I, I'll look at it and be like, "Oh, geez, look at this." And then two steps later, it's gone because that's just the way it works. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I really try and. And, and, and zoom it in as much as I, I possibly can um, with you know you still being able to really frame it in in your eye you know you can see that you can see you know it's not zoomed in where the the, the nose is right up against the side and the tail is right up against the side because it just won't give you an idea of the size of it but I do, do try to get it in as close as possible and um, you know, that's important to me to make a video where you really can see everything that's going on. But um, all right, Jock Scott, price tan it with a couple of little tweaks. I'll have the uh, the full dressing in the in the uh, in the description. All right, thanks everyone.